welcome to today's Community Cast. My name is Matt Morgan. I'm the pastor at Community Brookside, a new church plant in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are so blessed by your presence, and we hope that today's content will bring you joy. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Jeff. It's me again. Uh, I'm Jeff Janes. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, uh, I'm Jeff Janes. I get to be a part of community, um, but uh, Pastor Matt is, is out again today, hopefully feeling a little bit better. Um, we, we certainly want him to be back, and, and you may really wish he was back after the sermon today, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. No, I'm just kidding. We do, uh, we do want him to be back. Um, if you uh, are feeling like you need to, to give, don't forget to go to www.fumctulsa.com slash give, and make sure you choose Brookside Development on there uh, so that you can give. Uh, even though we're online only, you can still give uh, to this great community to help us to do the things that we're doing. So today we are going to talk about um, some plot twists that don't feel very twisty. So what I want you to do is on the Facebook chat, on the, on the online chat, just post on there your favorite non-plot twist plot twist, that thing that, that everybody sees coming, right? That, that story where you can see the twist from a mile away. It's still a plot twist technically, um, but you see it coming from a mile away. I'm talking about like in the horror movie when the guy goes into the garage full of sharp things. Yeah, he's going to die, right? That's not much of a plot twist. Or the romantic comedy where the two super famous stars are, are enemies at the beginning. Yeah, they're going to be a couple. Yeah, that's, that's going to happen, right? That's just the way it always works. Uh, ben, my 10-year-old, said it's like in every Pokemon episode the Team Rocket is going to try to foil Ash and his crew. They're just going to try to do something to get in the way of Ash and his crew. Hopefully I got that right. Ben, uh, have mommy post if I got that right. Um, and, you know, for me, I think of, of Scooby-Doo, of course. The meddling kids are always going to find the bandit, um, and they're always going to solve that. So um, what, tell me what your favorite non-plot twist plot twist is and, and put it in the comments. I, I'm excited to see those. Um, and thanks for all of you who put your stories in uh, last week about It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, those were some really great stories. Um, but not all of those plot twists, uh, even if they're expected now, they didn't always start out as super expected. I'm thinking about uh, the famous movie by M. Night Shyamalan, The Sixth Sense. I remember when The Sixth Sense came out and everybody was talking about it because it was a plot twist that most people didn't see. Now, some of you are going to be like, I totally saw that. I don't totally buy that, um, but, but you, you might have, have expected it. But I didn't expect it, and a lot of people didn't expect it, and everybody was talking about it. Um, but the thing is, M. Night Shyamalan kept making movies, and the plot twist kept being kind of similar. And so, like, three or four movies in, people were like, yeah, we get it, M. Night Shyamalan. Um, like, it was less surprising, right? It might have started out as a big shocker, um, but eventually... Uh, it kind of lost that surprise factor. It reminds me of another classic movie. So here I am again, cl quoting classic movies. But Back to the Future, if you haven't seen Back to the Future, it's a great movie from the 1980s where Marty McFly, who's this like 17-year-old high school kid, goes back in time 30 years to 1955 um, in a DeLorean, of course, because the 80s. And the DeLorean breaks, and he's got to find somebody to fix it. Well, the only person he can go to is Doc Brown, the person who eventually um, creates the time machine. And he goes to Doc Brown and he has this crazy conversation. Doc Brown is a little bit sketchy about this kid who thinks he's from the future. And so he says, OK, who's president in 1985? And Marty McFly, 17-year-old kid, says, well, Ronald Reagan is president. Well, Ronald Reagan was a super famous actor in 1955. Nobody thought Ronald Reagan in 1955 was going to be the president of the United States. But in 1985, he had been reelected. He had been president for five years at that point. Um, so Dr. Doc Brown was a little bit scared. He's like, starts naming all these other famous people. He's like, yeah, next thing you're going to tell me is Jerry Lewis is vice president. And who's the first lady? Jane Wyman? It's crazy to Doc Brown that Ronald Reagan, this famous actor, would be president of the United States 30 years later. Of course, that's what happened, right? Like, what was crazy to Doc Brown was just truth, 
for Marty McFly. I mean, we don't actually have to go to old movies to figure this out. Go back to 2019 you. So I know that's hard. It's been like 400 years since 2019. But go back to 2019 you and imagine if I told you that there would be a global pandemic, that the whole world would shut down, and that everybody would be wearing masks kind of all the time. You would think that was crazy. But now, if we find out that a school had been in person and then they had to go back to online only because of, a, of an outbreak, you're like, yeah, that, that, that's expected. Hold up. You're telling me that it's expected that a school would go back to online only because of a global pandemic. What, what once seemed crazy now kind of seems normal. But think about it. If 2019 you, if you, if you told that to 2019 you, they would laugh 2020 you right out of the Zoom call after they figured out what a Zoom call was. So when I asked Pastor Matt what he wanted to talk about today, this is what he told me. I'm just going to tell you the exact quote from the text. <laughs> and you can't see my head, apparently. No, so, can't. oh, okay. Um, oh, you're just putting uh, the, the comments there so I can see them. Awesome. That is awesome. That's great. Thank you for that, Gage. In a plot twist to my sermon, Gage has given me your comments, and so I appreciate that. Um, I love, and Gloria, I love that there are no plot twists in Hallmark movies. That's hilarious. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, so I asked Pastor Matt what he wanted to talk about today, and this is a quote. This is what he said via text. He said, I was planning on telling the story of Jesus and how he came to redeem fallen humanity. To which I replied, basically, isn't that what we talk about every week? And he said simply, plot twist. Okay, so <laughs> my, my reply might have actually been a pinky in the brain gif. But, like, really, like, isn't that what we talk about every week? And, and really, it should be what we talk about every week. But... When you hear something every week, it kind of loses that surprise factor, doesn't it? I mean, this is a plot twist like no other plot twist in all of history. It is a big deal. The story of Jesus is massive. It's the plot twist that changed eternity, not just movie history, M. Night Shyamalan. Okay, so I might be a little bit bitter about M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> But to really to kind of understand the, the impact of, of that plot twist, we, we need to go back to the way it used to be. And in some sense, all we really need to do is go back in our sermon series a few weeks and, and just kind of talk through some of those things from the past, from the, from the Hebrew scriptures. And some of those stories definitely feel like they have an A plus B equals C kind of storyline, right? Adam and Eve in the garden, they eat the fruit that, that God told them not to eat. So yeah, they get kicked out. A plus B equals C. Cain kills his brother out of jealousy. And yeah, he's going to get kicked out of the family for that, right? You, you just, you're out. Um, the whole world, except Noah, seems to forget about who God is and what God asked them to do. So yeah, God's going to hit the reset button on that one and, and start over. Like here comes the flood. Like all of those seem to be like A plus B equals C sort of, yeah, those are expected. Now, there are some definite grace-filled plot twists amidst all of that, um, but, but you, they just seem to feel all expected. I mean, yes, Adam and Eve, they get kicked out of, of the garden, but God is still with them when they leave, right? Um, Cain he gets removed from the family, but God puts a mark on him so that nobody will kill him. And Noah, well, Noah got a boat. And so he was able to, to be rescued from that. As I told you last week from the book of Job, God never abandons us. Even in the midst of those consequences, God didn't abandon us. And so God is still with us. But it's somehow in those stories, God still feels like somewhere else. Kind of like that, in a sense, this kind of disembodied voice or uh, kind of the clockmaker, historic clockmaker God idea that, that God designed the clock set the gears in motion, and the rest just happens, like clockwork. <laughs> but that's not actually how God works. 
God created the earth. Yes, God created the earth. God did set the gears in motion, but God doesn't leave us. That God isn't kind of somewhere else beyond this place. There are reminders all throughout Hebrew scriptures that, that God remains close. But even though the scriptures hinted at it, they actually look forward to it. In some cases, they flat out told it. When God became flesh and Jesus moved into the neighborhood, yeah, nobody was expecting that. That was a plot twist. The best scholars in the Jewish world, they couldn't believe it was true. The Pharisees who tried to follow every single commandment, had the the scriptures memorized, they didn't see it. It was right there in front of them, literally in their face, but they missed it. I mean, yes, Jesus had shown up or God had shown up in a burning bush. There was the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire. God had been really close to David, was close to the prophets. God was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But flesh and blood, God walking around among us, yeah, nobody saw that coming. And honestly, that's really, truly a unique thing in Christianity. Now, I'm not an expert in other faiths, but I've studied a lot of other faiths um, and their stories, how they, how they work. And, and none of those stories of faith have anything close to this understanding of Jesus coming, God coming to be one of us. I mean, there are certainly encounters of God and, and there are special people who were truly inspired by God. But this idea that the creator of the universe would become human and not just like God in a human costume or some temporary phase, but God becoming flesh and blood and moving into the neighborhood, that just doesn't happen. But our God was born in a manger got left behind by his parents. He cried when his friend died. He suffered at the hands of the Romans. He was crucified, even though he hadn't done anything wrong. And he did it all for us. Friends, you may have heard that story before, but that doesn't make it any less powerful. It just doesn't happen anywhere else. Friends, that's breaking news. And not only should it break the internet, it broke eternity. It broke the universe. Last week I told, talked about the oldest book in the Bible, Job. And today I want to talk about the oldest part of the New Testament. Many scholars believe that Philippians 2, especially 6 through 11, are the oldest part of the New Testament. It was probably a song that the earliest Christians sung while they were hiding in the catacombs and meeting in homes. So let's just read it to remind us of the power of Philippians 2. Hear now the word of God. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion... Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. And now here's the hymn. Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
I'll admit, that's one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. But that's it. That is our amazing story in a nutshell. Jesus was God, but he emptied himself to be one of us. And not just any one of us. He went to the lowest of the low, like like a servant, And, and not just any servant. He was humbled, even to death, even death on a cross. This isn't some story of an absentee clockmaker God setting gears into motion. This isn't some A plus B equals C normal story of how religion works throughout history. God said, nothing else I've done to try to bring paradise back has worked. So I'm going in myself. And God became one of us to save us. Jesus didn't have to do any of that. Didn't have to suffer. Didn't have to die. But he did it to save us, to save you, and to save me, to save all of creation. We don't deserve it, but he did it anyway. We, don't, we can't repay it, but he did it anyway. We can't understand it. We can't comprehend it. We can't explain it. But that doesn't make it not true. It happened. Friends, this is not some ho-hum, hey, I've heard that before kind of thing. This is an eternity-shifting, universe-bending plot twist like no other. So why is it that we can't share that with the world. If this was a movie like The Sixth Sense or something like that, we would talk about it. it would, we'd post about it. We'd, we'd share it. We'd put it out there. We would want everybody to go see that movie. If it was a novel, we'd form book clubs just to talk about that book. So why is it that we can't tell this story? I mean, we don't even need to worry about a spoiler alert. Many people have heard this before. And they may not be surprised by the facts of the story, but maybe, just maybe, we can surprise them with the impact that it makes. Friends, sometimes people need to see these things for themselves to believe it. Like even the disciple Thomas, when when Jesus died and rose again, Thomas needed to, to see it, to feel it for himself. So how can we put this story of Jesus in front of people? How can we help them to see this story? Maybe it starts with us forgiving somebody who doesn't deserve it. Maybe instead of plotting revenge or taking down an enemy, we find a way to love them. On social media, and maybe instead of unfriending or, or, or just yelling back at someone, Maybe we choose a path of reconciliation. Maybe instead of falling into the A plus B equals C kind of storyline, what if we flipped the script? What if we gave hope to the hopeless, love to the loveless? What if we showed mercy to the merciless? And maybe if people see Jesus' love in us, maybe they'll believe that story of what he did for the world. And maybe, just maybe, that was God's plan the whole time. Plot twist. In the name, may it be so, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on today's Community Cast. We hope that you were blessed by today's conversation. If you'd like to know more about Community Brookside, please feel free to visit us at our website, communitybrookside.com, or find us on your favorite social media outlet. We hope to hear from you soon. Be blessed.